as we headed to the elections, many people are talking about the coalition government. People are skeptical about what is happening, what is going to happen to South Africa after 2024 elections. I think everyone in the country right now, they are starting to warm up to the idea of coalition governments. We don't know what it has for us, but we know that the African National Congress is not going to win in majority in these elections. But it looks like the executive there at African National Congress, man, they feel different way. The African National Congress, all their leaders are out in full force telling South Africans that, guys, we need to win in a clear majority. We need to show these people that the African National Congress is the party for the people of this country. <laughs> I don't know what makes these people think that the ANC is going to win in clear majority. Is there something that the African National Congress know that the people of this country don't know? Is there something that tells the African National Congress that, man, in these elections, you people are going to win in a clear majority? If the ANC didn't get so much votes during Ramaphosa's first term, what makes them think that after this tragedy of a term of Ramaphosa, they are going to get a clear majority in these elections? So... What are your thoughts, guys? I know last last year, people were having debates about the coalition government. So one of the debates that was sparking all over the place was which coalition government will be better, the ANC and the DA or the ANC and the EFF? Because I think some particular South Africans understand that I mean, any, any coalition that is going to be formed in these elections, it will have to involve the African National Congress. Of course, we don't like the idea, but it will involve the African National Congress. So last year, many people were actually debating about which coalition would actually be better for South Africans. Man, that is where you saw the narrative coming out that, man, you see that 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 coalition of the ANC and the EFF, man, it's unthinkable. Man, Some people said that there is no way the African National Congress should work with the DA. Some of the ANC members said, man, we want nothing to do with the ANC. Some of the ANC veterans, I remember the president of the Veterans League at the African National Congress, he, he went to a podcast to Biz News last year and he said that the African National Congress would prefer working with the DA over the EFF man, because you know those people there at the EFF, they are ungovernable. So guys, it's going to be interesting man, to see how the <laughs> the elections of this year are going to pan out. To think, uh, Considering the fact that we have over 350 political parties, so I think South Africans need to brace themselves for anything. I mean, right now, people like Jacob Zuma are out in full force with parties like Um Konto Wesizo. I am one of those persons who believes that Um Konto Wesizo, it is the product of the African National Congress. Man, there is no way the ANC can allow someone to start a political party using the name of their ANC military wing and not do anything about it. Many people have been accusing the African National Congress and say, why are you not doing anything about Jacob Zuma? I mean, how can you allow Jacob Zuma to use the name of MK? I mean, how can you allow this person to actively decampaign the party and not expel this person. Gwede went to 702 recently and said that the African National Congress will only deal with Jacob Zuma after the elections, man. That is when I said that, man, these people are working together. These people are working together, man. Jacob Zuma will go out and campaign for Umkondo Wasizwe. Millions of people possibly are going to vote for Umkondo Wasizwe and they're going to take those votes and go into coalition with the African National Congress. So this narrative that... Uh, uh, it will be the coalition. It will not. It will be nothing but a but a talk. If MK party gets into into coalition with this with with this African National Congress and that party of Isma Hashule, man, the ANC will still win in a clear majority. I think this is what the ANC means. I think this is what the ANC means, man. I think the ANC can actually realize that Jacob Zuma man, has a lot of pull. Wherever Jacob Zuma goes, many people follow Jacob Zuma. And if the ANC has actually cut a deal with Jacob Zuma for, for, for Jacob Zuma or MK party to donate their votes after the elections, this is the reason why the African National Congress is so confident saying that they are going to win in a clear majority. Guys, I don't know. This is me and my conspiracy theories. Am I right? Am I wrong? Please tell me what you think. <laughs> Despite the previous general elections results, which saw the ANC in Gauteng clinch onto the province through the skin of its teeth, amid the growing discontent with the state of the nation and the loss of three metros in the province, the ANC in Gauteng still believes it will win the support of the province in the 2024 polls. I mean, like, what makes them think that, guys? <laughs> what makes them think that? Oh, I have two theories. <laughs> It's either the African National Congress, they are banking on Umkonto Wasizwe to donate the votes to them, 
or the African National Congress, they know that they are going to intensify that message that people are going to lose the social currency because I mean, I said that message is very dangerous. This is the most desperate campaign for the African National Congress. So that message is very dangerous. If the African National Congress really intensifies this message that if people vote don't, don't vote for them, they are going to lose their social accounts. More people are going to come out to save their social accounts. So the ANC might as well get a majority in these elections. So guys, are you prepared for the African National Congress to run the country again for another five years? Some people have said that if the ANC will run the country for the next five years, man, South Africa is practically done. South Africa is practically done. We are entering a crucial stage where we will defend the African National Congress in our province. And our message is clear. We want to win Gauteng without any form of coalition, without any form of factional uh, partners. We will win Gauteng alone and we will govern this province alone. On the sidelines of the Lihutla, Lusufi addressed the Constitutional Court order dismissing the ANC's bid to appeal a ruling, ordering it to hand over its cater deployment records to the Democratic Alliance. Lusufi says there is a serious misunderstanding on cater deployment. And the cater deployment. You know, guys, every time when the ANC goes to these NEC meetings, you know, these NEC meetings, man, they take a whole weekend. And the news guys and uh, and the news uh, uh, and uh, uh, and the guys from the news will be there and trying to get the updates. What has the African National Congress concluded with these NEC meetings? What is it exactly that African National Congress is discussing at those NEC meetings? What is it that these people are discussing at the NEC meetings? These people men have been having these NEC meetings for years, but South Africa is on a steady decline. So what is it exactly that those people are discussing at these NEC meetings? You remember. The Lindwe Zulu, the Minister of Apartheid for the African National Congress, went on a newsroom and said that the African National Congress is very serious, man, especially when it goes to these NEC meetings. And these NEC meetings, that is when the African National Congress talks about the renewal process. This is where the African National Congress actually introspects itself and make better decisions going forward. So how many decisions, how many meetings have been made and, and how many uh, NEC meetings have actually been be, be, been made? And what has changed? What has changed? You know, I've always been curious, man. <laughs> I've always been curious. You know, every time when the when when the when the ANC NEC concludes their NEC meeting, man, the reporters will be there like, what is it the African National Congress has has concluded, man? What 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 are the conclusions of the NEC meetings? And that is where you will see that embarrassment of the African National Congress Secretary General Figle Mbalula standing there, man, and telling South Africans that the the the, the African National Congress NEC and Lhotla have concluded one two three one two three, but. These people have been attending these meetings for such a long time, but South Africans do not see the results. So this is why I'm asking, what is it exactly these people are discussing in those NEC meetings? What is what has been discussed at those NEC meetings? Are these people honestly discussing the issues that are facing South Africa? Lucifi says there is a serious misunderstanding on cater deployment. And a cater deployment means that somebody that is highly qualified, competent, committed to serve, and ready to ensure that the work is executed must be given an opportunity where he meets the profile of those particular jobs. Le Sufi says someone who is highly committed and highly qualified deserves to be given a chance. So let's look at the African National Congress. I mean, like, typically, let's look at the ministers of the African National Congress. Are those people qualified to do those jobs? If this cadre deployment thing of the African National Congress was based on people's qualification, was, was based on people's skills, are ministers in South Africa today qualified to do the jobs they are doing? I mean, like, what, why, why is the country on a steady deadline under the ANC government if you people were, were able to choose people who are rightfully uh, deserving to, to be in those offices? For 30 years, South Africa has been on a steady deadline. You guys have been running the country for the past 30 years. You are defending cadre deployment and say that cadre deployment, it means that people who are highly qualified and highly motivated, these are, are, are kind of people that, that deserves to be put in those positions. But you look at the African National Congress, you look at the departments in the government. Are those people qualified? Are those people motivated to, to help the people of South Africa? I, I think the average South Africans can tell you no. The, African South, the average South Africans can tell you no. Why? Because all of those portfolios that those people are handling are nothing but a mess. All of them. All of them, all the state-owned entities are nothing but a mess. All of those departments and government are a mess. 
So how is this Cicada deployment actually working? Lucifi further remained unfazed by allegations that the Nazi Spani program is an electioneering tool for the governing party. All these political parties, they say in the legislature, they know we put these jobs in our APPs. All these political parties, they serve in the legislature. They can hold us accountable if you are using this job for electionary. They're not doing that. I mean, I think the reason why people are saying that you guys are using these quote-unquote jobs for electionary is because these jobs seems like they appear whenever the elections are near. Whenever the elections are near, that is when you will see Panyazal Sufmin come out and saying that we are going to hire 10,000 young people. We are going to hire 3,000, 5,000, 3,000, 3,500 young people. This is only when you see these people coming out with those bogus jobs and you look at the quality of those jobs and you think, man, do South Africans, especially young people, deserve those kind of jobs? Are young people in this country, man, do these people actually deserve these kind of jobs that Panyazal Sufi is giving to them? Can you blame the political parties for actually accusing you for using these jobs for, for electionary? Can you blame them? Can you blame them? Julius Malema once said that um, that Nancy Spani thing of yours, man, it, it, it is just a way for the African National Congress man, to hire the people who are going to help them with the door to door. <laughs> this is the allegation that Julius Malema has made. That that Nancy Spani thing, you guys are simply trying to find a way to hire those people who are going to do the the door-to-door the, the -door campaigns for you. And, and, and you are using it cleverly by saying that all everyone must apply. Everyone must apply. But you already know that who are you going to pick. So how true is it? I'm not saying it's a lie. I'm not saying it's true. But how true is it? How true is it? What is the shortcut is to go on the public platform and insult this program? Kenny Mapanga, SABC News, Box Club. So the African National Congress don't think they are going to lose these elections. The African National Congress basically thinks that they are going to win in an in a clear majority. I don't know why. <laughs> I honestly don't know why, guys. If you have, if you know why will the African National Congress go out and say that they are going to win the elections in a clear majority? Please tell me. If you think my conspiracy theories are wrong, because my conspiracy theories, I have two men. I think that MK thing. People really need to look out for that MK party, man. And now, Duduzani Zuma has opened up his own political party. You remember he came out and he said that he doesn't want anything to do with Umkondo overseas. He doesn't want anything to do with the African National Congress. And the, the leaders of the African National Congress, the past leaders of the African National Congress, and the present leaders of the African National Congress are the reason why South Africa is like this today. So he doesn't want anything to do with, with, with neither of those parties, man. People came on my comment section and they said, Thomas, do not be fooled by Duduzani. Zuma, man. Do not be fooled by Duduzani Zuma, man. This is the plan from the Zumas to actually take over. This is the plan for the Zumas to actually help the African National Congress. So I think that is another narrative. I think that is another conspiracy theory. <laughs> and the another conspiracy theory I have is that, man, if these people actually intensifies that message that if people don't vote for us, they are going to lose the social grants, man. I think South Africans are about to see the miracle, man. South Africans are about to see the miracle. As, you see, when it comes to the to 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 the to the Kada deployment, I don't know what Lesufi means when he says that people do not understand what Kada deployment means. I think the people on the ground they understand what Kada deployment means. Everyone in the country understands what Kada deployment means. You simply have to be a good standing member of the African National Congress to 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 be elevated to wherever. You simply need to be a good standing member of the African National Congress. So for Panyazal Sufi to come out and say that the people who are highly motivated, highly skilled, are the ones who deserve to, to, to occupy those offices, it's a lie. Because if it wasn't a lie, government would be functional today. I mean, Ramaphosa came out and said that in government there is no capacity because the apartheid government did not train enough young people. This is what Ramaphosa said. So how can Panyazal Sufi say that uh, the Kader deployment thing prioritizes people with high skills and President Ramaphosa coming out and say that, man, we are hiring people with no qualifications. There is basically lack of capacity within the government and that is the fault of apartheid. So which is which? Which is which? <laughs> Guys, please tell me what you think, man, on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.